me start sharing the slides. Okay. So before actually diving into the mathematics of uh, control system, uh, let us understand deeply. I mean, let me get deeper into the introduction of uh, control systems. So what is basically this topic, what we're going to discuss about is, it's uh, basic control systems, what is meant by transfer functions. Okay, uh, only the first two parts I will be touching today. So we'll continue further later with the remaining topics. Okay, so here, what are the objectives of basic concepts? We'll study the definition of control systems, then history of control system, basic features and configurations of control system, and the analysis and design objectives, what is the design process, and how we can benefit from studying the control systems. So this is one of the most basic control system. It's called as Flyball Governor. Okay, Flyball Governor designed by James White. I am not going deeper into the operation aspects of this. This one just uh, basic uh, control system. You can Google it and even you can find some videos of working of this flyball governor. So briefly telling about the history. So it starts from James Watt, then James Clark Maxwell. Routes is one of the scientists. Lee Apno is another scientist who worked, uh, who contributed in control system. Then Nyquist, then H.W. Bode, then Nichols, Evans. These are all the scientists who have contributed fundamentals, many fundamental applications to the control system. So the basic domains of control systems are like optimal control, optimization, fuzzy logic. Then from 1970 onwards, the new domain has emerged as state space model and adaptive control. Then the another domain of uh, control system as robustness control and artificial intelligence. Then during 1990s, the robotic applications uh, where the control system was applied. And from 2000 onwards, the control system is used widely in the autonomous vehicle applications. So let us take one simple example, the control problem. To understand what is the uh, what is the control problem? Let us look into this diagram. Okay. So this is one of the example of maintaining the level in a tank, water level in a tank. Okay. So it has an input, which we termed it as quantity of water input as Q in and quantity of the water going out as Q out. And suppose, imagine you have an objective that it is asked to maintain the level of water at a particular height given by capital letter H, okay? And this is the system you have, okay? So here, we don't have any control instrument or device for this particular system. So let us see what, what happens while maintaining the level of the water. So obviously Q out depends on H, okay? The output of the tank, the quantity of the water is dependent on the height of the present height of the water level. So if Q out equal to Q in, height H is constant. The water level will remain constant. This small letter H and capital letter H are different. This capital letter H is the level you need to maintain. But this small letter H indicates the actual level of the water. So if output and input are equal, obviously the height of water or level of water is going to remain constant. And if output is more than the input, the tank will get empty. And if output is lesser than input, the tank will overflow. Okay, so since we don't have any control device or instrument, and we also don't know what amount of water is getting in and what amount of water is getting out, because we don't have any specifications for this particular, uh, say, inlet pipe or output pipe. So controlling is very difficult task, okay? Actually speaking, the control is not possible at all unless we have some specifications about the system, fine? So let me let 
let me ask any queries everyone is able to see the ppt properly two three can reply here please yes sir yes sir okay okay, okay i'll proceed class are there any queries you can type in the chat box aise to nahi kada na next so let us look more deeper into the problem so when we have uh, some specifications or say control devices when we have some specifications or control devices see this is how the system looks like the same system but with some additional sub system we can say like a measurement measuring instrument and a controlling device okay so the system is modified now and the control problem has changed now so we have now a measurement side from this glass and we have a valve to control the output of the system so when we have these devices additional devices the control is easier so you can adjust the valve position according to the requirement okay so this control problem is reduced to certain level so this is how it looks like so first we saw without control second we saw manual control this is the third case automatic control okay we have the same problem now but with some added devices or electronic systems like that okay so we have a sensor now instead of a glass pipe we have a sensor now and we have a controller which is communicating to the sensor and we have a final control element okay we have a final control element which takes the signal from controller and it is connected to the valve the final control element will control the valve position okay so here we need to understand some definitions about a system about a control system so first one is the process so every control system will have a process so maintaining a water level is a process here next every control system will have measurement of some parameters so that that is called as measurement part of a control system so here we are we should measure the level of water okay so the parameter is height measuring parameter is height then error detection so this is a very important part in control system so error detection so what is the error here error is the difference between desired level of water and the actual level of water so we should always keep track of the error to maintain the desired level of height and the uh, next one is controller so every system every control system needs a controller of course it is to correct the errors okay so a controller should act according to the errors created in the system so again this controller may be an algorithm or a device instrument okay can be anything then the final control element the final control element is to modify the process so that you get the desired output okay so here we can see that it can be an actuator which is connected to a wall okay actuator connected to wall or as a dc drive or a stepper motor connected to a wall wall at the outlet so that we can term it as final control element so these are some basic components most fundamental components of the control systems process measurement error detection controller and final control element fine so this is a about a control problem so i repeat once again first we started with no control element next we started with a manual control element then we came to automatic control elements or control systems so when we look every system in terms of a component or a sensor or an amplifier or an actuator or dc motor this is how we can write okay so first look at a temperature sensor so i already said these are the subsystems of a control system 
So if you look at those subsystems or components individually, this is how we can write those subsystems. For example, temperature sensor, it will sense the temperature and it will give the voltage as an output. Okay, so the input for a temperature sensor is temperature, output is a voltage. So then what we do, how do we read the temperature, say on a uh, display. So we, on a display, if you want to show the temperature, the process goes like this. You fix a temperature sensor, which will read the temperature. It will take, uh, it will give the voltage as an output. Then you will have a lookup table. And from that lookup table, you will compare that particular voltage. And then you decide what temperature it is. Okay, it is the, that is the sensory sensing. Then accordingly, you will display the value. So similarly, we have an amplifier which will take voltage as input and then give voltage as output. Then a DC motor, DC motor will take input as electrical signal. Output will be a mechanical rotation in terms of RPM, uh, oh, sorry, in terms of speed. Then control valve. Yeah, this control valve is a, uh, a different kind of element. The input it will take is again in terms of an electrical signal, which uh, I have already told in the previous class as a pulse width modulated signal. So percentage open, that represents how much percentage of the wall is to be made open. Then output what we get is the flow of liquid in cubic meters per second. Then similarly, there are two more elements. You can find out a variety of such elements in a complex control system. So the main aim of this slide is just to have an idea about what a component can be represented in terms of a block. So it can be represented with an input parameter, then with an output parameter. So this is how a typical control system together with all the subsystem looks like. So we have a input signal, which is termed as desired output, what output you are desiring, desired, and the set point. So the capital letter H, what we have termed in a water level maintaining case, that capital letter H is termed as desired output. You want that level of water to be maintained. Okay. It is also sometimes referred as reference input. Then we have a controller. So the controller, there are variety of controllers. Then we have an actuator, which I have already explained. Then we have a process or plant then the output of this system is the actual response of the system so i hope there is nothing much needs to be explained in this diagram this is the flow of signals in a typical control system okay so we can consider another example suppose imagine you are riding a bike okay so before you start the bike you will have some destination in your mind so that is called as the desired output or set point or input signal. Then your subsystem is controller. Okay. So we don't have actually PID or robust controller in the bike. Accelerator will act as a controller and the way you control the accelerator. Okay. will control the speed of your bike and even the direction. Okay. So that is another subsystem. Then actuator is of course some mechanism which will connect the combustion chamber to the wheel. Okay. So that we can term as an actuator. Then process is of course the bike process or plant is nothing but bike. So bike is a system for which you are applying some control to actuator. So once you reach the destination, that is your actual response. I mean, while reaching the destination, whatever the different control strategies you apply will give you actual response. For example, if you encounter with a traffic signal, you need to apply the brake. You need to reduce the uh, fuel, I mean, the accelerator. So like that. So in a process of controlling the system, we have different subsystems to achieve it. Okay, that's fine. So there is one more block diagram with one additional element, uh, which is termed as energy source. Okay. So in the previous block diagram, we haven't shown 
any energy sources but here with energy source okay this is how the actual block diagram or a control system component looks like input signal output signal then energy source so this it is the energy source is written as optional so what it means uh, is like you can either have a energy source or it's not necessary to have an energy source in the system suppose imagine you are controlling the speed of a motor for an electric vehicle and of course we need to control the input power to the motor so the control aspect goes like this so what is meant by input signal to control the speed of a motor in electric vehicle is that to is that you need to adjust the percentage of pulse that needs to be given to the motor okay percentage of pulse in the sense you will have a switch for that switch you will have one control signal and on the other side you will be connecting the energy source suppose imagine if you have a energy source of a uh, say high voltage okay then controlling the high voltage directly is not a feasible option okay so instead of that we use a switch and through that switch we will control the energy flow to the motor so there comes the energy source into picture but while operating with a lower voltage signals we may not need to have a additional energy source so that is one additional component in the control system that everyone should remember so this is about it uh, basic uh, control systems and uh, basic block diagrams we will proceed further with another kind different definition so this is another way of representing a control system the simplest way okay so with this i hope everyone got the idea of uh, what is a control problem and what is the block diagram and what is input and what is output what is set point and what is the actual response what is controller what is actuator and what is process and plant all these things should be kept in mind so if you are making a note that is fine otherwise i will be anyhow providing these ppts later okay so next let us look into the meaning of control system design we understood what is system now what is design is the next aspect so before diving into the design everyone should have a thorough understanding of following concepts mathematical model of systems okay so every system is defined with some mathematics so we should understand the mathematical model of that then relationship between input and output okay so for a system what is the relationship between input and output then what are the test inputs what are the test inputs that you have to use before or that you have to i mean study before making any design okay fine so before starting with a mathematical model we will start with before modeling what all basics one should have about a system so here comes another terminology open loop control okay so in the open loop control you just understand the flow of signal so from input towards the output we have a set point or desired response we have a actuating device we have a process and the output so the flow of signal is unidirectional okay the flow of signal is unidirectional so there is another open loop control system example you can have some additional element like correction element in the flow or in the forward path we can say from input to output so there is no way that signal is coming back okay so it's flowing from input towards the output 
now look it into the other type of system which is called as closed loop control or feedback control so in the closed loop case we have one signal coming back towards the comparative or comparison block from the output okay so we have a desired or set point here we have a comparing element controller process so the rest all is same except this feedback path we call this as feedback path and this is a forward path so we are measuring the actual response from the output side okay from the output side and then comparing it with a set point comparing it with a set point so here is another elaborated example so comparison element is represented with say like plus and minus then the comparison output is error signal termed as error signal and the flow glows like this okay so what is the actual difference between open loop and closed loop okay so in simple words in simplest words if you ride the bike by closing your eyes it is a open loop system i repeat again if you ride your bike by closing your eyes it is an example for open loop control system or open loop control and if you ride your bike by opening your eyes it is as good as closed loop control system or feedback control system so now i think i don't need to explain the consequences so which one you feel is better riding by closing eyes or opening eyes closing eyes sir <laughs> opening sir closing eyes closing eyes opening sir open i should be open while riding by otherwise you will reach some other destination if you close and ride bike you will reach some other de destination right will be adventurous sir <laughs> you can try once <laughs> okay that's fine so let us uh, just uh, briefly look into these two aspects open loop control will never compare what its actual response what actually is happening okay open loop control system will never take care of the actual response at all once you switch on it will keep on moving whatever is the output so such type of behavior is never is uh, is not feasible at all okay so you should always have some means of comparing what actually is happening with the system what actually is happening with the output of the system okay so that that's why the closed loop control has lot of advantages so look at this scenario of closed loop block diagram in simple words imagine you have a say a set point at a destination at a particular destination then you will start your bike okay you start riding your bike and controller will control the speeds accelerator everything so process is of course your bike your process will be running smoothly then suppose imagine if there is a red signal at the traffic okay red signal at the traffic and actual output at the actual output you have a sensor which is your eye so i will sense the signal and it will send a signal i mean it will send a instruction to your hand so saying okay there is a red signal so the sensor has measured something and it has sent back to the comparison part so comparison will do some comparison okay of course i have to reach the destination but there is a red signal let me use the controller to control the process okay so this measurement will happen in many ways it's not an unique way suppose you want to ride your bike for 100 meters you will start riding 
then controller will accelerate because initially you were at zero meters say so control will accelerate process will start initiating bike will start moving then the output at the output the sensor will measure the meter will show you what is the actual distance covered so if it covers say 10 meters then measurement will be sent back to the comparison element okay still 90 meters is required can i increase the acceleration controller will take the action so like that the process repeats and once you reach 100 meter distance the measurement will tell you that you are actually at 100 meter and comparison element will give the output or the error as zero zero units so when the error is zero units control will not shut down but it will keep maintaining that actual position or the desired position okay so the control will help the process to maintain that desired position so this is how riding the bike with opening eyes will go like fine so the basic question you may get is differentiate between open loop and closed loop controller with examples can anyone give any other example for open loop and closed loop anyone sir water heater versus geyser water heater versus geyser that is one example sir stepper motor versus servo motor functioning okay that is also cool sir fan and ac fan and ac is the best example okay fan and ac is good example actually you can see like this automatically controlled air conditioners when you set some temperature level to be maintained inside a room so the air conditioners will air conditioners will operate automatically by sensing the temperature of the room at every instant of time okay maybe once in two minutes or three minutes like that so it has a closed loop a feedback signal coming from a temperature measurement okay so good examples you gave also understand what is the difference between servo motor and a stepper motor it's a very good fine so this is about open loop and closed loop okay that's fine i think uh, it's five Okay, five five. We can stop it here today. Yes, we can stop.